Hey everybody, this is Stuart with Wine on the Dime. A long time ago, I fell in love with a wine. Her name was Cassiero. She's beautiful. She's at seven to eight dollars, and she's fantastic. But today, I'm wondering if I found a new love. Well, let's open her up and find out. <laughs> Hey everybody, so today I'm going to be reviewing the Cassiero del Diablo Primera Reserva. Reserva Primata. Reserva Primata. So, um, this is a Cabernet Sauvignon from uh, Chile. It's a 2015, 14% alcohol by volume, and I got it for the top of my price range at, for Wine on the Dime, which is $15. Um, I saw it for $15, I instantly wanted to buy it. So a long time ago, uh, back in 2013, I actually wrote a review of Cassiero del Diablo, uh, the, the standard cab, on my site, Wine on the Dime. Um, I was motivated to do it because it instantly became one of my favorite Cabernets under $10. Or under, yeah, under $15. Under $10. It's one of my favorite Cabernets. If I'm in doubt at all about what I want to pick up when I'm at the store, I just pick up Cassiero. It's fantastic go out and buy it now if you've never tried it just a regular eight dollar bottle just try it so taking a step back about a year later maybe a year later um i tested their uh reserve of pravada but their malbec once again fantastic my only complaint about the wine was coming out of uh bottles being served at room temperature um or low 70s it was a little too hot in terms of the alcohol flavoring and uh smell on the and on the nose but if you uh chilled it down to proper uh, red wine serving temperatures then it was amazing especially if you ran it through that little stainless steel aerator uh that i showed in the party essentials tip um the tip video so uh, it was it was an amazing wine got that one for i think 14 dollars so when I saw that this one, which is normally around the $16, $17 mark, was on sale for $15, I went ahead and grabbed it. Because in my view, it's not cheating for Wine on the Dime if I still get under $15. Because this is a helpful tip. This is how I justify it. So if I see that there is a wine that is normally $16, $17, $18, maybe $20 on sale for $15, is it still worth spending $15 on that bottle of wine? It might have just been an overpriced $20 bottle of wine that should have only been priced at $10. So I'm actually doing you guys a service when I go and test these wines to see if it's really still worth paying that extra few bucks to get the high tier burnt wine that might be on sale or for clearance. Now see, there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and start the review on this one. So this is the coloration of the wine. Um, looking at it from the top-down approach, which is probably the most proper way of doing it. Let me move the Govino thumb out of the way so I can actually see it. Um, I'm going to say that this wine is a definitive ruby color. Uh, it has a good transparency to it. It has a great red coloration uh, all the way around. It's it's absolutely it's absolutely beautiful. I love it. So good. Anyway, so uh, looking at the smell. So I'm going to admit I cheated a little bit. The back of the wine has some notes on there regarding what you're supposed to expect. They said it was ruby. I give that a check. That is a ruby coloration. Next, they said that there are cherry, chocolate, and a little bit of dark fruit or dark berry, like blackberry notes. So from my standpoint, I'm going to see if I can pick them out and see if I can take them for their word. Now, Seeing as they make the wine, they probably have a better sense of it than I do. But from my layman's standpoint, let's find out. Hmm. Uh, the first thing that I'm picking out here is actually a little bit more. Uh, is actually a little bit of the chocolate. So um, good job, Cassiero. I'm going to give you a check on the chocolate. Not really getting the blackberry though though the cherry is coming out hmm. 
yeah, so check to the cherry. I don't know, we could also be looking at this. If you want to take a look from a science standpoint, this could be experimentation bias, because I know what the results are supposed to be, and I could be like shifting my mental perception in order to align with that schema. But I will say, I'm not picking up the Blackberry. Not at all. It, it is a little oaky, though. That's nice. Which is, in, I think, in the description, too. Uh, French oak. Yeah, okay, so check on the oak. Yeah, I'm not getting blackberry. I'm getting a little, little bit of oakiness, some cherry, kind of a chocolatey um, aspect, kind of in the back of the nose. Um, yeah. Anyway, oh, I just spilled it. Okay, so um, yeah, I'm gonna have to do something about that. Uh, let me go ahead and, and do uh, do a test. Oh. This is not bad. So, um, it's very, the thing I'm the most interested about is it says it has a long finish. I'm kind of getting a medium long finish. I'm, I'm not getting, like there was one wine, I can't remember, it was, a, it was a Zinfandel. It never felt like it left. It just kind of always wanted to stay there. Uh, I, I wrote about it on my blog. I just can't remember which one it is. Um, but, this case, I would say it's about a medium, medium, long finish. It's it's lingering a little bit still, but it's still kind of went through pretty quickly. Um, say medium acid, very oaky. Um, there are some red fruit accents to it. Uh, the cherry is kind of more in the middle of the palate. Um, not I would say, see if I was gonna say it was a dark fruit, I would probably say it's more plum than it is blackberry. I'm not really getting any blackberryness out of it. Um, definitely oaky. And definitely French oak. It's not. It's actually not what I expected. So I expected, um, put this down for it, continue to drink it. So first of all, I'm gonna rate this and enjoy it again. It is worth $15. If you can find it at $15 and buy it. It is a solid wine. Um, the construction of the wine itself is very nice uh, in terms of the pre uh, presentation. The bottle has a significant heft to it. The bottles are always custom made um, design with their logo. They normally have a sticker. Uh, some of the higher ends of the $30, $40, $50 dollar bottles will actually have this be a f function of the bottle, but there's always this sort of like presentation seal from Cassier on there, and I always love that. Uh, the label is high quality, and um, just like I said, the, the bottle has a, a significant weight. Like you, ho you feel like you're holding a big bottle of wine whenever you're, you're holding this, this standard 750 mil uh, container. Um, on the flip side, I would almost say that there's a little bit too much oak in this. Um, it, it feels a little oak heavy. Um, the, the black fruits that are in there, uh, feel like they're a little scattered. Um, but that, like I said, just could be me not picking out the right types of black fruit notes in this wine. It, someone who is a Psalm, um, picked this up and instantly nail all of it and say, yes, this is good, or this is mediocre, or whatever. But for my opinion, I'm gonna rate this and enjoy again. I do like it. I'm nitpicking it a little bit just because my experience with Cassiero over the years has been so great that I kind of over inflate them in my mind. Um, and I'm gonna pull it down to reality a little bit and be a little nitpicky on this review. Um, but like I said, I definitely am gonna buy this again if it's at $15. Um, this is a great day night wine in my opinion because it will pretty much go with most dishes that you'll have. Um, especially if uh, you're like me and you like to do like, you like to like smoke something nice, not like smoke, but like smoke something nice, like in a food smoker or, or um, 
uh, you like to have some sort of like game with your meal, um, or maybe even like a heavy pasta dish. This could probably go well with that pretty well. Um, like I said, I, I, I think Cassiero has high quality products. Um, I have not really had a bad Cassiero in my opinion, but I also have not tried anything in their five to four to six dollar bracket. So I'll probably have to pick something up like from that area soon so I can try out and see if the whole line is good or if Cassiero Diablo uh, or Del Diablo uh, Cabernet, their standard offering at 750 to eight is probably where you should start uh, and see if there's kind of a floor there on spending with that, uh, with the Concha y Toro uh, winery. So anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you like the video, please make sure to subscribe. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, if you think this video sucked, um, make sure you hit dislike and you let me know. If you loved it, hit like, let me know. Uh, and also, if you want to get notifications about additional uh, videos coming out in the future, make sure you click on the bell next to the subscribe option. Uh, YouTube has changed their policy recently, and you will not be able to see notifications up front on uh, things that you're subscribed to unless you have the notifications feature, the bell enabled on the, on the channel as well. So uh, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime signing off. Have a great day. Yeah. <laughs>